As a first generation Asian American, I was content with being American on the weekdays and Asian on the weekends until people would come up to me and ask, where are you from? The US never seemed to be the correct answer because they would always ask, no, where are you really from? I began to question the idea of identity with those around me and even question myself. My American classmates never saw me as American. I was Chinese. My Asian friends never saw me as Chinese. I was Taiwanese. Yet, when I returned to Taiwan, I was as American as any other tourist. In the spring of 2013, I had the pleasure of being in the St. Croix Praxis Studio. We spent a week in St. Croix and spoke to the citizens there. During our trip, we learned about the complex history of the island and the traumatizing past that still affects them today. The rich history and ecological importance of the island intrigued me, but the identity issues the people of St. Croix faced affected me even more because of the similar issues I experienced myself. A significant concept that was emphasized throughout the class was what defined a Crucian, a resident of St. Croix. There was a lack of education on St. Croix since its archives have been destroyed due to multiple disasters, and teaching history in schools was a sensitive subject. There's controversy in relation to teaching slavery, which occurred under many of the flags. In most parts of the island, this idea of working outside is so sensitive and relevant to their past that to this day, it keeps young people from farming. As a result, many children turn to stories and literature to understand the history of St. Croix since writers used the archives to write before they disappeared. We worked closely with the St. Croix National Park Service. Our project was based in Salt River Bay, where the beach was frequently used by the locals for recreational use and for their annual Easter camping. However, it rarely celebrated the historical importance of the area. As designers, we are quick to find solutions and analyze data. But how can we communicate our ideas? Through stories. Stories break boundaries. It allows us to put ourselves in someone else's shoes, to dive into sensitive topics while hiding behind fictional characters and scenarios. The issue of identity has made me more sensitive toward the design process. In the act of storytelling, can be used as a mechanism for successful design communication by presenting sensitive issues in a less frightening form. I decided to apply this method to Salt River Bay in hopes to break the boundary between the past and present and to facilitate the conversation for Crucian identity. I created an experiential path throughout the site with different storytelling nodes. Each node is related to a traditional myth that can be tied back to something in the present. In addition, each area is designed to stimulate one of the five senses, creating an educational and memorable series of events. So today, I will be your tour guide through these series of events. Welcome to Salt River Bay. There are two ways to enter Salt River Bay. The first is at the visitor center where you can pick up a map, rent an audio guide, or participate in a live tour. Or you can experience the tour individually near the beach where you will find a map describing each area. Regardless of where you are, you can download the Salt River Bay Tour Guide app on your smartphone or scan the QR codes found on your map. Feel free to stop, pause, or skip sections of the tour and I hope you enjoy your experience today. Are you ready? Let's go! Welcome to the Visitor Center. Here in the center courtyard is a garden growing traditional Taino food. Weekly cooking classes are held in the kitchen here in the Visitor Center where we teach you how to prepare common dishes eaten today. Did you know that St. Croix used to produce 99% of its own food, but today 99% of it is imported? During our weekly cooking sessions, we will also teach you how to eat healthy and grow your own food using our own garden as an example. Luckily for you, the cassava plants are ready to be pulled out today. If you'd like to participate, 
head to the cassava bed and pull one out. But wait, did you pray to Yachu, the god of cassava and agriculture, for a good harvest? Back then, Tainos believed that if you did not honor the land and Yashu for all he gave, he would be very angry and bestow a terrible famine on you. But once you've said your prayers, feel free to take a cassava and head toward the kitchen where you'll learn how to make cassava bread, the same bread our ancestors once made. As a bonus, you will also learn how to make the commonly eaten almond sugar cake today. Did you know that the French were the first to bring over almonds to our island? If you want to learn more about our common dishes and their origins, feel free to take a look at the cookbook called Recipes from Home, located in our kitchen. Once you're done eating, let's continue the tour and take a walk around. As you head toward the grassy hill, you notice that there is no defined path on the ground. Instead, you are guided through the space by following a metal grass path defined by reforested trees. Do you hear the leaves rustling furiously? It's the wrath of Guabanex. It's almost frightening, the strength and fury of the wind god, but above you is a kinetic sculpture hanging from the canopy made of fishing wire and wood. With Guabanex's breath comes the soothing sound from the clanking wood. The sculpture moves gracefully, like a serpent slithering in the air, guiding you down to the base of the hill. The meandering path and musical sounds make the experience less frightening, if not enjoyable, especially with the clear view of the sea. Once you reach the bottom of the hill, you begin to be engulfed by trees once again. The vegetation becomes more and more dense, and the sunlight slowly disappears. The denseness and darkness feels like the beginning of a cave, and the familiar feeling of fear begins to creep in once again. But what is this? Sitting in front of you is a grinning rock. It is Makakal. He who protects his people stands gallantly, warding off anyone who dares to harm his tribe. These caves remind you of the legendary Maroon Caves, caves the slaves once ran to in order to escape recapture by their owners. Curious, you venture further in and eventually find a clearing. You breathe, taking a break from the claustrophobic trees, and take a look around. On the floor, you see stone frogs, tonas, similar to the ones you briefly saw scattered along the trail on your way here. The Tona resemble the children who turned into stone, hungry and wailing for their mothers who never returned. The story of families torn apart becomes too tragic to bear, so you press onward through the trail. You eventually come across a large clearing that has a circle of stones in the middle. In front of you is one of the only babies found in the Lesser Antilles a ceremonial Taino ball court where the tribe would gather around for various events. Petroglyphs are carved on the facade of the stone seats, playing out the story of Damien Karkarko. In the center is a serpentine sculpture made of hammered metal mimicking fish scales, and in the distance you hear the ocean crash against the shore. Do you remember how the ocean was created? When Damien Karkarkaro broke the gourd that held Yaya's bones, Yaya's remains spilled out into the world, creating the ocean and all the fish in the sea. Take some time to rest and listen to the sound of nature. But before the sun goes down, let us venture to our last destination, Fort Saleh. The spirit of various zemis and gods rests on this man-made earthen fort. Back then, the Tainos would pray to various gods for protection and guidance. As you gaze across the water, you will notice the visitor center where you started this tour. Do you remember the wind god mentioned earlier? You can still feel her presence right now. The Tainos frequently prayed to Yachu for protection against the wind god, the same way this fort, originally built by the Knights of Malsha, 
was meant to provide protection to the island. As you make your way around the fort, you will notice various outlooks that not only provide breathtaking views, but also a short description of the different semis the Taedos would pray to for protection and guidance. As you trace your steps back to the visitor center, you watch the sky erupting into flames, turning into a sunset. As the moon and stars begin to emerge, you notice that the center sculpture in the ball court has erupted into flames as well. The citizens who were swimming at the beach earlier have come together in the Beatty, sitting around the campfire laughing and telling stories. Take a seat and listen to the story of how Bayamanko gave fire to man. Or would you rather listen to the stories of the underworld, or look up at the sky to find the man who was thrown into the heavens and turned into stars? Regardless of your choice, your official tour of Salt River Bay has finally come to an end. But as you stay and listen to the stories around you, you'll notice that maybe this isn't the end. Maybe this is just the beginning. Thank you.